In this presentation, this is the fifth of our hierarchical clustering um, uh, how to do hierarchical clustering with R and where we got to previously is we got to this stage here where we were able to come up with a dendrogram and we were able to sort of identify clusters within the dendrogram using a special command called, called rect.hclust. So let's just actually sort of go have a quick overview of what we're doing. We're working with this data set called cars, okay? And what we did is we got rid of the uh, two of the variables car and country because they're non-numeric. So we just kept the numeric ones and we call that cars dot use as to sort of say we're using these particular variables. Okay, just uh, just it's the miles per gallon, weight, drive ratio, horsepower. They're all the numeric ones. What we then they did then is we created a distance uh, matrix using the dist command, uh, and what we supply is a data frame of numeric values and numeric values on, um, columns only, so only numeric data. And so you get it. That's probably doesn't come out very well, but essentially that comes out as a histogram or another histogram a lower triangle so we use this as we set that up as a matrix that cars dot this is a matrix and we supply that to h clust as a argument so the h clust is this thing that builds a distinct uh, a hierarchical clustering solution based on this uh, distance matrix, okay? And that's really where we got. We could plot it as well to get that diagram I've just sort of seen earlier on, uh, that we just sort of seen there a second ago. Cars.dist, there we go. Uh, that'll come back up again. So it's this diagram here, this uh, that tree diagram there, that dendrogram. So that's where we were. Now, what I'm going to do is actually sort of you sort of look at a group membership, a, a membership of particular clusters for each of the 32 uh, cases. So, in the uh, cars data set, there's actually 32 uh, cars, and we're just trying to sort of group them into clusters. So, based on what we done previously, we reckon there was about three or four, two or three obvious clusters. Uh, uh, so what we want to do here is actually just sort of see if we're going to sort of split a, a category into three, what for each of the 38 um, cases which category will it go into? Okay so what we're going to use is this um, command here called cut tree, uh, C-U-T-R-E-E, -E. there's only one T in it so watch out for that. So we want to see how many cars are in each group and so we want to sort of see if there's a two cluster solution and three cluster solution what cars are in which um which cluster okay so you can create a vector showing a cluster membership of each observation using the cut tree function and so since the uh, ob object returned by the hierarchical cluster analysis hclust contains information about so solutions with different number of clusters we pass the cut tree function, the uh, the cluster object, and the number of clusters we are interested in. So, for argument's sake, if we want to look at a, so let's just go back here a second, and where we got to he was here. This is our clustering solution here, H cluster. Where am I gone there? That's our clustering solution. Okay. But it, it's not really output that we can interpret. You can plot it uh, as we sort of seen previously. What I'm going to do here is actually sort of see what happens if I want to sort of. I'm going to sort of say I want a tree, um, tree table, a tree group solution based on my dendrogram. Okay. So what I do here is uh, cut tree cars dot h cluster and uh, groups. equals 3. So I'm missing an argument here. What's the argument I'm missing? Uh, group, oh just specify 3. So I just, I didn't need that groups equal to 3. I just write in 3. So, 
Uh, what this will do is for each of the 32 cars it will assign a membership here. What we could do here actually just to sort of make things a little bit clearer is I'm going to C bind that cars car that's actually just sort of uh, look at them both together side by side C bind is a very useful command, it's a very simple command so what that does is what the hell? Blah, blah, blah. Let's go back and just fill this out and see what I've done there. Uh, oh, no, typo, that's what's wrong. Okay. So, uh, is isn't great really the C bind command but essentially it sort of says car 6 got assigned to group 1 car 17 got assigned to group 2 uh, down here it says car 32 got assigned to group 3 and so on and uh, we can do further ones here as well if we, if we have four categories which cars got assigned to the four category solution there's 38 cars there all together and it just to sort of say which cars got associated with which groups so for example 14, 32, 34 and 10 and car 4 they all got assigned to group 3 whereas a couple of cars down here got assigned to group 4. Group 4 is not a particularly big group as by the looks of things. Uh, so that is the um, uh, the, gru uh, the groups there so um, what I could have done there actually, sorry, is actually, sorry, I just sort of, what should I have done there? Data frame might have helped here. That's a, trying to come up with a nice, elegant, oh, perfect, oh, brilliant, that's so good. That's a, sort of really what I was going for. So, uh, these are all the cars and the four clustering solution, uh, the four cluster solution there. So, for example, the, the Chevy Citation well, got assigned to group three. Okay, th that's really what I was going for. C-bind. Eh, okay, but data frame, that looks great. Okay, so you can sort of see what uh, cars got assigned to what groups. Uh, I think that's really the one thing I really wanted to get across in this presentation, actually. It's a sort of simple enough idea. Uh, you could table, uh, sort of see how many are in each group as well, using the table command. So let's do that. Let's go back here table, cut tree, uh, h or cars dot h clust uh, with tree value, uh, tree uh, table solution we sort of see that there's 12, 12 and 14. If we change that to a four, a four, sorry, a four a tree cluster solution, change that for, to a four cluster solution uh, we see the difference there again. What we might be interested in is sort of seeing that just the way things broke down there that we had 12, 12 and 14 so 12 cars uh, 12 cars and 14 cars. Now we have 7 cars 12 cars, 14 cars and 5 cars just sort of see did between the two groups was there a, any transference did like for example group one split into group one and four between the two solutions or was there a big change around so what we could do there is just do a two by two table and yeah no it's essentially what happened there is that when I went to a three cluster solution to a four cluster solution um, so the just the, the first group just split in half into a second group so seven and five uh, actually that sort of makes sense really so the uh, once a uh, 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 once you're assigned to a cluster it's very hierarchical so you, they wouldn't be swapping so there'd be division but not swapping uh, okay let's see now just sort of go through this and I th you can sort of automate the process using apply so we like a solution where there aren't too many clusters with just a few observations, but it may make be may may make it difficult to interpret our uh, results. For the three cluster solution, the results look uh, satisfactory. We have twelve, twelve, and fourteen. Uh, but what you could do here is actually just try this out with a the uh, 
this function here, cluster size, and just go through it and sort of see how many, uh, what's the breakdown if we go from two groups to six groups and so on. Um, let's go like that. So first off, cluster size. And this is just the sort of uh, cluster size, it's just to te tell us the cluster sizes for each of the groupings. Okay and then we're going to apply that, use the sapply function using that function we've divide, def defined uh, from the values 2 to 6. So let's have a crack at that. So uh, a two cluster solution we have 12 cars and 26 cars uh, three cluster solution we have 12 cars, 12 cars and 14 cars so 2 and 3 gets split up okay four cluster solution we have 7, 12, 14 and 5 so group 1 from the three cluster solution gets split up into 2 with a five cluster solution down here we have 7, 12, uh, 9 and 5 and 5 so essentially what it was group 4 here now becomes group 5 and group 3 in the 4 cluster solution gets split into 2 it becomes groups 3 and 4 in the uh, it splits into two groups of 9 and 5 in the um, 5 cluster solution and finally the 6 cluster solution what happens here oh yeah uh, cluster 1 from the 5 cluster solution cluster 1 gets split up into 2 uh, it gets split up into group 1 here and group 6 uh, so there's 7 all together, 4 here and 3 here okay and all the other clusters are sort of very similar going from 5 to 6 in terms of their makeup so that is cluster membership for hierarchical cluster analysis with R